My name is Robert John Langdon and you're watching my video channel. This video cast is one of my 10 minute shorts which looks at sites around Britain using LiDAR. In a strange sense this is my version of landscape archaeology for the 21st century. I hope you enjoy. This week we'll look at Stonehenge in the Mesolithic period to see how the landscape would have looked during that time. If we look at Stonehenge using LiDAR we can clearly see that it's not placed in the highest point in the landscape. In fact it's placed halfway down a hill with much higher positions available close by. In particular on top of the hill by Vespian Camp where we find the site of Big Mead. The Open University has found human fire pits with cooked meat dating back to the Mesolithic period. So the question we must consider is why build Stonehenge at this low position? LiDAR can easily answer this question as we can create 3D models of the landscape which enhances the features and makes landscape identification much easier than consulting either OS maps with their contour markings or even field surveying where the land surf features are easily lost at ground level. If we fly over or hover about 100 foot above the landscape we find Stonehenge is on the edge of a vast dry river valley. But in the Mesolithic this valley was not dry but very wet with an active tributary fed by natural springs that run southward down to the River Avon. A high groundwater table creates springs and groundwater is at its highest directly after an ice age as the melting water replenishes the aquifers in the ground and creates the water table. To understand the volumes of water that comes from a spring, they are categorised from A to E, the most productive being A, which flows at 2800 litres per second, and has been estimated that the dry river valley we call Stonehenge Bottom had several springs pumping an immense volume of water through the bottom to the River Avon. We could duplicate this volume of water within our LiDAR software to see how it would affect the landscape during the Mesolithic. According to the article evidence, we estimate that the water table, and hence the river shoreline, was about 30 metres above the current level and would have flooded the entire river valley up to the old car park at Stonehenge, some 97 metres. We know this is the case, as we have found excavation evidence in the old car park back in 1966, when three giant post holes were discovered when laying the car park tarmac. These post holes showed that they were cut into the chalk bedrock some 9 to 10,000 years ago, in the early Mesolithic period and their contents was of silt and sand which is found by the shorelines of rivers in this area. We can date these post holes as they are the remains of prime charcoal in the bottom of these holes which were carbon dated to be cut about 8300 BCE. Other post holes have been found on this curious alignment in the old car park, which indicates a total of five post holes were found that not only did their dates go back to the early Mesolithic, but they match the radiocarbon dates of halves 
found at the Quarry Star of Stonehenge at Craig Rosswy Valley. I feel that I must point out that the current batch of archaeologists would disagree at this evidence of a higher River Avon. Their theory is that these post holes were ceremonial totem poles placed by random hunter-gatherers. Sadly, the lack of logic for this excuse is breathtaking. Firstly, the dates of these post holes span over 1,000 years, as the excavations show they were replaced and not just rotted away in place. Secondly, they are over one metre wide. A one metre wide pine tree is almost 200 feet high. And so this massive tree needed to be cut down with a stone axe, which would took weeks. Somewhat overkill, one would think, for a ceremonial pole in the ground, which could have been, to be honest, anything at all. The old car park is 10 metres lower than the Stonehenge site, and recent radiocarbon dating on excavations done in 2008 has confirmed from charcoal remains found inside the Sarsen Stone Circle that the main site was in use by 7200 BCE, emphasising the connection between the totem poles and the main site. So, if they're not totem poles, what are they? If my hypothesis is correct, these holes house posts which were functional mooring posts for boats. They were utilised for unloading their four-ton bluestone cargo and as they were on the tidal river, the post beams could be used as a simple lifting device. One metre cross beams were placed on two of these one metre wide posts, secured by a simple mortise and tenon joint as used on the Stonehenge lintels. This lifting device could have been used to raise stones from boats during high tide by merely tying the stones to the crossbeams. Then, as the tide receded, the vessels holding the stones were naturally lower in the water, thus lifting the stone, like magic, into the air. This is the first example of a hydraulic lift, which shows the level of sophistication of our ancestors' thinking. The stone could be lowered to either a sledge or rollers placed underneath the cross beams for the 50 metre journey to the top of the hill. So there you have it. LIDAR shows that once upon a time the river Avon was much higher in the past, which turned Stonehenge into a peninsula surrounded by water. Next week we will continue to look at Stonehenge. This time, looking at the Neolithic period, and we'll look in depth at what the builders added to Stonehenge, which we call the Avenue. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Tune in next week for another edition of Langdon Investigates, where we look at another ancient site. Until then, subscribe below to make sure you're informed when new videos come on the video channel. Until then, thank you for watching.